Hi, my name is Mike Aben and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, after some adventures with remote tech, I managed to rendezvous these two vehicles that are both on their way to Dres and right now very deep in interplanetary space. And what we're doing is we're going to be transferring some fuel, specifically from the Kermes 1, which is my crude Dres Explorer, over to the Dres 1, which has got a whole collection of probes and things that it's going to be doing. You might recall that this all got started with a less than stellar planning when it came to planning my Dres insertion, and then that was compounded when the Kermes 1 during its ejection burn dropped two full radio tanks of fuel thanks to a staging mishap. But we're trying to do what we can here, trying to salvage as much as we can from both of these missions. You might recall as well a number of episodes ago that I already docked a lander with the Kermes 1 and we stole all the resources. So what we're trying to do is turn three missions and distribute the resources so that we can perform two missions. Anyway, so once we got over the fuel that I felt that the Drez 1 needed, we detached and backed the Kermes away. And then it was time to readjust our Drez intercept, setting up a maneuver node. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now that maneuver is not going to be for about another hour and a half. And in fact, the Dres's closest approach is not going to be for another 234 game days. So we're not going to be seeing that really anytime soon. But with this accomplished, it was time to do the same thing with the Kermes. Except with the Kermes, we will do our course correction immediately. But before we can do that, well, there's some dead weight we're going to need to get rid of. We'll start by undocking this lander. Yeah, I did have a plan for a crude landing on Tadrez, but that is now into the dumpster with that plan. We needed the fuel from the lander vehicle. And uh, we will also decouple these now empty radial fuel tanks. These are the ones that were supposed to have been dropped instead of the full ones that were dropped way back when we were in Kerbin's sphere of influence. And with that all done, the Kermes now has almost six kilometers, sorry, six kilometers per second of delta V, which should make it little trouble for us to do a Drez flyby and then get these folks back to Kerbin. And while we're performing this burn to adjust the Kermes trajectory, talk about what else is coming up in this episode. I do have a moon station on its way to asteroid Yoy, which is in orbit about the moon. So we're gonna try and connect that to the asteroid. I also have the Korion 3 coming back from the moon on its way to Kerbin Station. And then we're going to be launching the Columbia 2, my Mark III space shuttle. And it's actually got a number of missions it has to perform. We'll get to that in a little bit, but one of those missions is going to be to do a crew rotation aboard the station so that we can uh, get the Korion 3 restocked up, recrewed, and uh, get it back out to the moon where it still has a number of contracts that it needs to perform. But right now, the Kermes 1 is saying goodbye to all of this crap <laughs> it's leaving behind. Yeah, most of which is destined to forever just stay in orbit around the sun as, well, just more space junk. We always need more space junk. And like the Drez 1, it's, not, it's going to be another 234 days until they are on their closest approach to Drez. So we're going to be saying goodbye to them for quite some time. So enjoy this view. But right now, well, let's get ourselves back to the Kerbal Space Center. Early on in this series, I was pretty aggressive with the way I used strategies in the administrative building. And then I learned that reputation get you better contracts. And so I decided to delete all of my strategies to build up my reputation. But if you take a look at reputation now, at that bar up there at the top, it's like pretty much at the border between the green and the blue. I figure that's pretty good. <laughs> I think I have enough reputation. I don't really know. But I thought I'd get the strategies back involved again. And the one that I ended up using was the fundraising strategy. This is a strategy that converts reputation earned from contracts to funds. And so I set it at 
And uh, that means that 60% of reputation earned will get converted to funds at a rate of 1,153 funds per reputation point. Mm, you know, it really doesn't sound that dramatic now that I'm saying it, but uh, I figure hopefully it'll help because I really do, I'm, I'm finding myself tight on funds. I want to fully upgrade everything in the KSC and uh, I just feel like I'm stagnating right now. So hopefully this will help. Anyway, with that done, let's get ourselves out to the moon. Where we join what will hopefully become Moon Station. Uh, you saw me launch this thing last episode. It's got a HAM module, a KSP Interstellar Extended lab module and a bunch of storage and life support and power and communication and all of that kind of stuff and what we are doing here is just setting up or getting ready to set up our encounter with asteroid yoy which is going to be the eventual destination for this so we'll start to burn and let's get out to map view you can see there's my encounter we're going to do a single orbit and then we'll be coming around and meeting up with Asteroid Yoy. And as we close in here on Asteroid Yoy, I do have to explain a couple of things. There is no RCS on the little tug that is pushing this thing around. And the reason I did that is because the tug is connected to the only docking port that's capable of connecting to the asteroid. It's going to connect to the asteroid via a 2.5 meter docking port, which is already connected to the asteroid using one of those grabber units. Um, I guess I could have put a docking port on the other side, but on the front and top end, I kind of liked having this kind of communication slash solar array tower. So I made the decision that I'm just going to end up ditching this tug and then I'll connect something to it with this sort of radial docking port that's on the side. And then that will maneuver it in and that will have the RCS. To, I, I, I don't think this is going to be a problem. So step number one in this whole process is just to get this thing in pretty close. Oh, one bad design decision here. Uh, that docking port is really close to that uh, Gigantor solar panel. I should have had those offset by 90 degrees. So I'd best retract this solar panel so that I can get the fuel barge docked with the asteroid to dock with it. There we go. And then we'll just go over to the fuel barge and undock. In fact, it has to be the fuel barge to do this because this 2.5 meter docking port is where the station is supposed to go. Uh, yeah, that's the whole reason why I brought it up this way. Uh, I was thinking about it back then when I brought the fuel barge up originally. Okay, RCS is not working. What's going on? Oh, don't tell me there's no monoprop in here. Okay, let's see. No monoprop there. No monoprop there. Oh, no. No monoprop anywhere. Shoot. <laughs> okay, so that's not going to work. Okay, let's see if we can get it redocked. So we'll, we'll set that docking port as a target. See if we can not just sort of thrust ourselves forward, get back on here. I do have monoprop in the lander. So I should, oh, I gotta turn on the engine here. There we go, okay, a little bit of a puff forward. Okay, we are not lined up very well, but I'm just kind of hoping that uh, maybe we'll kind of just be able to snuggle up here and magnetic forces will be our friend. Uh, no. No, in fact, I just gave the asteroid a nudge, and it is now turning away from me. Oh, groovy. And thanks to persistent rotation, time warping won't stop it. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. I have this lander. This lander has monoprop in it. We'll detach that, and it will save the day. We'll dock it with the fuel barge. And uh, let's see here, undock it. There we go, undock. Okay, the fuel barge is drifting towards it. Let's see if we can uh, nudge away a little. By the way, there we go. That should be okay. Okay, so if these two are going to dock together, we got to get rid of this adapter here. There we go. The original plan was actually to have some Kerbals come up here and blow it up with some KAS explosives. There are no Kerbals around, so all these robotic crafts are going to have to take care of it. This thing's just going to float around. Maybe we'll find it later on and get rid of it. I don't know. Okay, it's going to turn this a little bit so that the uh, adapter's not in the way. There we go. 
And then we'll go back to our lander, 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 lander. There we go. And then the lander will perform the docking. And boom, there we are. Okay, so let's transfer over some mono propellant. Get that ready. Uh, it's not like the lander has a ton of monoprop either, so we'll just transfer over just a little bit. Uh, there we go. I got the right one going. Yeah, it's going to be enough. Uh, the lander's going to need more of it because now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to change this around. I'm going to have the lander dock with the station modules, and then the lander will bring it over because the lander, I think, has it's more maneuverable, I think, than the fuel barge is. Okay, come on, grab hold. Okay, there we go. And of course, in the meantime, we have drifted away from the asteroid. What I'm going to use, I'm going to use the uh, Tug's engine to kind of push us back in the right direction. And then, of course, kill off most of our velocity because I don't want to be doing, I want to be using as little monopropellant as I can. And with that done, we'll get rid of the tug. I'm a little bit bummed about this because there's actually a bit of fuel, quite a bit of fuel still left in that tug. I wanted to make use of it and transfer it over to the fuel barge. But I can't transfer it over to the lander because the lander is completely filled up as far as LFO goes. So, oh well. Alright, let's get this over onto that docking port. Obviously, the RCS is majorly unbalanced, <laughs> with it just being that tug there stuck to the side. Oh, I could have planned this better. And oh, the asteroid is tumbling out of control, too. That's going to make it super easy, isn't it? And I'm out of monoprop. Oh, great. <laughs> Um, yeah, and with absolutely no vehicles or reaction wheels or pro bodies or anything now attached to this asteroid, I have absolutely no way to bring it out of control. Might we actually maybe get lucky and... No, this sure as heck is not going to work. So <laughs> what I did is I used the engine on the lander to uh, zero out our relative velocity, hopefully keeping this conflagration here close to the asteroid. Let's see if we can get the fuel barge at least docked. Nope, nope, now the fuel barge is out of monoprop. So that's it. We have no more monopropellant left. <laughs> it's all gone. Oh my gosh, should I make a dog's breakfast of this thing? This is why you don't give robots the job that Kerbal should really have. We're going to have to wait for uh, getting one of our Karayans, the Karayan 3 probably, get it out here, get some Kerbals out here, bring a whole ton of monoprop along with it. The Karayan 3 can hold a lot of monoprop and uh, see if they cannot fix up this incredibly botched job that, uh, that I made of this. I decided not to uh, deorbit the fuel barge either. I do have control of it, and because uh, it has a probe body on it, reaction wheels, and what I decided to do is also to zero out its relative velocity, so hopefully it'll stay in the general vicinity of this asteroid. It'll be some fuel, hopefully, that the uh, crew of the Karayan 3 can make use of. Now, this thing doesn't have any power generation. Here, we'll turn off that antenna, and let's see what we can, yeah, let's toggle the torque. So we'll turn off the reaction wheels and there's a hibernation, hibernation, hibernation on. Well, now my electricity con consumption is zero. Well, that's so cool. Is that stock? I don't know. Or maybe remote tech put that in there. I got to find out whether that's stock or not. But anyway, the Karayan 3 is going to have to come in here and clean up this mess. So why don't we go and check in on them? where it looks like we've just engaged our hyperdrive, but in fact, these are sparks. These are sparks that are being added in thanks to the reentry effects mod. 
I think they do look pretty cool, but I don't know. I don't know about you, but uh, this, you know, sparks coming off of ships means molten metals coming off of this ship, which means that we're doing damage to it. This is supposed to be a reusable vehicle. Oh, well, it looks good. <laughs> Perhaps not realistic, but uh, kind of fun at the same time. Anyway, what you have just seen are the fourth, sixth, and seventh arrow breaking pass of the Karayan, which got its apoapsis down low enough that I felt I could do an attempt at a rendezvous. So next time we were up at apoapsis, we pushed our periapsis up to 120 kilometers, which is the altitude of Kerbin Station. And we set up the rendezvous, which isn't going to be for another four and a half hours. So we'll get back to that in just a little bit. But before we do, well, we got ourselves a launch. This is the Columbia 2, my Mark III space shuttle. And the original plan for this uh, mission was actually was just going to deploy some uh, a payload that we'll get to in just a little bit. That was the original mission, but as you might recall from last episode when I went to 1.2, Kerbal Construction Time lost its part inventory, which means that my space plane won't be ready to fly again for a little bit. And that ended up expanding this into well, a triple mission. There are three things we want to get accomplished. One is to deploy that payload. Number two is, well, you, if you take a look down there at the bottom right, you will see that I have two tourists aboard. I have two tourists that want to do orbits about Kerbin. I figure it would be simple enough to stuff them into here, and so they'll get that accomplished. And uh, mission three is going to be to do a crew rotation, because as you know, the Crime 3 will soon be uh, back to Kerbin Station, and Valentina and McNand are both ready to level up, so I want to get them down to the surface, so we're going to be doing some rotation. There are some people on the station that will be taking on the Karayan 3, but uh, aboard here we have Burke and Jean Lee. Burke is going to be the next pilot of the Karayan 3, and Jean Lee is going to be the next engineer aboard Kerbin Station. So, with the missions all now described, why don't we get to our payload? A few episodes ago, I landed a Minmus driller onto the surface of Minmus for an ore recovery contract, only to discover that if the ore concentration isn't over 2%, these little drills are useless. So, what we have here is a beefed up version of the Minmus driller now with the big drill bits. So hopefully this will be able to recover ore from the surface of Minmus to satisfy the contract. But of course, before we get to this Minmus injection, uh, these guys have to rendezvous with Kerbin Station in order to do the crew transfer that I want to do. So we'll set up our rendezvous with Kerbin Station. And then we'll bounce back to the driller and set up our Minmus injection burn. Now I can leave this thing in orbit as long as I want, but I don't know, I think these two burn, I think the timing's gonna work out. I think so, I think I should be able to do the rendezvous burn, then come here and do the injection burn, and then be able to finish off the rendezvous. That yellow waypoint you see there, just to the right of the shuttle, that is the space station. We will be there soon. We'll jump here to, I'm at the descending node right now, I'm just using a bit of RCS to tune in my encounter. It's now down to 0.2 kilometers in just under six minutes. So we best get over to the driller and do our Minmus injection burn. And then we can get back to the Columbia and finish off the rendezvous. Now normally when I go to Minmus, I like to launch in an inclined orbit. But that really wasn't the best way to go here because I wanted to rendezvous with the station. So we're gonna have to make a correction burn on our way there, but here we go, and whoa, 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 whoa! What the hell? Okay, get back onto the maneuver node. Why does it want to yaw over so badly? Oh my gosh, this is a real struggle. Back my back, let's, uh, okay, let's not use remote tech to hold the node. Let's see, we'll try it with the uh, stock flight assists. Okay, well, those engines, they have their 
thrust limiter at 100%. That's not what the issue is. I don't understand. The, could the mass be off? I don't see how. Everything's pretty symmetrical. But it really wants to yaw. It wants to tilt northwards. You can see it's wanting to do it there. No, 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 no. Go back. No. No. Okay, wait, wait. Cut the engines. Okay, let's get back onto the node. Oh, man. Okay, I'm just going to have to keep my thrust down. Oh, this is going to take forever, though. This is so... I'm, like, only just over 20 seconds away from the maneuver node, and I still got... And that's a full thrust with two and a half minutes of burning to do. It's not like this thing had a huge thrust-to-weight ratio. Oh, this is really messing this up. Hang on a second. Is it possible that the exhaust from that top engine is running into the drill? Does KSP model that? I don't think it used to, but I've just gone to 1.2. Maybe that's something they've been doing, I'm, that I'm getting like uh, interference of the exhaust gases. The exhaust gases will be putting a f force on this drill and would reduce the effective thrust on that one side which would cause it to yaw in exactly the way that it's yawing. Wait, let's extend the drill? Okay, and increase thrust? Oh, it's better. Oh my gosh, I mean it still wants to a little bit but I'm able to hold it now. That must be it. And now that it's extended it's getting less uh, interference of those exhaust gases. Oh my gosh you know I'm really annoyed but at the same time I'm I'm actually kind of impressed <laughs> this is being modeled okay yeah um, the unfortunate thing is that I do have a let's check in on the uh, Columbia here okay uh, let's scroll up in there and where are we? here we are oh my gosh they look like they're right on top of each other okay no 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 I'm gonna shut this down and then we're going to hop out to the Columbia, which it turned out had already passed the station, but it's now less than two kilometers away. So we can deal with that. We just need to burn a little bit of fuel to get us going back in the right direction. I'll let the min -miss driller do an orbit, and then I'll see what I can salvage <laughs> when it gets back down to periapsis. But this takes priority right now. We'll just come in here for the docking. Oh man, there are too many vessels up here. I mean, there's the Columbia now, there are two of those Dream Chasers, plus a Kuryu's. I really should have gotten, like, Val and McNan to take one of these Dream Chasers down. Reduce the number of vehicles, but I'm just starved for pilots. You know, with the with my space plane, the Otter X-1, sort of being temporarily unavailable, I, my ability to take Kerbals up and down out of low orbit is a little bit hampered, so... Yeah, the weight. And as we come in here for our docking, these guys are just going to have to wait around for the Karayan 3 to get here. And then we'll do our crew rotation, and then we'll bring the space shuttle back down to the surface. But right now, with this accomplished, best get back to the Minmus driller and see what we can do. And we are back towards, well actually we are past our periapsis now because we're coming towards the end of this min-miss injection burn. Don't forget I still have a correction burn to do mid-course. What I did is I ended up uh, turning down the thrust on these engines. I set them all to 70% and with that I was able to sort of keep it more or less at full thrust and keep it more or less pointed in the right direction. But needless to say this is not exactly my most efficient transfer out to min miss ever. In fact, now that we are coming towards the end here, I can see, yeah, we got 202 meters per second left. That's it. And I had planned on landing this freaking thing. That shows you how much fuel I ended up wasting. I still got an 82 meter per second correction to do. Well, obviously, there's no way I'm going to land it. I'm not even sure I can get a capture. 
you know what? I think maybe the best thing to do would be to just to leave this in this eccentric orbit around. It's not going to encounter Minmus, so Minmus won't mess it up because it's below the plane of Minmus's orbit. And then send out, you know, the Korion 1 is a few days away from home. Maybe once they're back, I'll send the Korion 1 out here. We can refuel it. We can uh, maybe get a Kerbal to move these engines around so that they're not all uh, messed up by the drills. I don't know. But that's all going to have to be for later because right now, well, guess who has finally arrived at the station? Yes, it is the Korion 3. You know, one thing I do really like here, you might have noticed it a few times, but I want to draw some attention to it, is the extra rendezvous data that's coming from, uh, I believe it's better burn time that puts it down here by the nav ball. This is fantastic because, like, usually I end up doing, when I'm far away from the target, I end up in map view because then you have the close encounter integrators and I'm using that to kind of judge how far away my encounter is and how close my closest approach is. But now I have all that information right down here by the nav ball and I much prefer not to be in map view. I mean, it's prettier here. So this is fantastic. I can do the, I can start my whole docking procedure from much, or rendezvous procedure from much further out. Anyway, docking wasn't an issue. And once we got these folks docked, oh my gosh, we got 10 Kerbals up here now. But it isn't going to last. And what I ended up doing is uh, having to shuffle crew about. Um, McNan, of course, is making sure that he gets all the science from the Korion 3 and transfers it over to the Columbia, all that science that we collected from in and around the moon. And then we had to restock the Korion 3. And we ended up draining all of the liquid fuel reserves that are at the station. So I'm going to have to send up another barge in the future. It has enough fuel to get itself to the moon comfortably, easily. Probably even get itself back. But there's tons of fuel in orbit around the moon. So I'm not worried about that. So we'll undock the Korion. Take a look at her new crew. As mentioned, we got our pilot, Burke. We have our engineer, Wilman, and we have our scientist, Shell Cal. Now, their transfer window is not for another three hours. So in the meantime, let's get the Columbia back down to the surface with Valentina and McNand. And, of course, with our two tourists, which we need to get back down to the surface for our contract. We'll fire up our orbital engines, and then we're going to get this thing down to an 80-kilometer circular orbit. And then from there, we're going to plan our final descent. Now, you may recall from previous episodes that I've had some issues putting this thing down onto the runway. In particular, I was always overshooting the prediction that trajectories, I can get it out, trajectories was giving me. So uh, this time I told myself what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick save here in orbit, and then I'm going to practice this and really kind of try and dial it in instead of always just sort of shooting in the dark. So because tra trajectories is always predicting short, this time I'm going to put the cross just off the west coast of the continent that the uh, Kerbal Space Center is on. But as you can see here, this time I ended up coming up significantly short. So revert, try again, this time putting the crosshairs on the mountains. And again, despite my best efforts to try to extend the glide as far as possible, I was again going to be coming up, well, this time just a little bit short. And then I started thinking, you know what? New version of KSP. Maybe trajectories is working for me now. So I'm going to put the cross right onto the KSC. And, well, let's let you judge how well this went. So I did have the air brakes on there. I'm going a little bit fast. Lost control for a moment as well, but I think I got it now <laughs> to do some fancy things to bring it in. But I seem to have it zoomed in on it now, coming in towards the runway. And touchdown. And with that, I'll thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.